The coaxial cable. A long coaxial cable consists of an inner cylindrical conductor with radius A and an outer coaxial conducting cylinder with inner radius B and outer radius C. The outer cylinder is mounted on insulating supports and has no net charge. The inner cylinder has a uniform positive charge per unit length, lambda. Calculate the electric field in part A at any point between the cylinders a distance R from the axis and B at any point outside the outer cylinder. C. Graph the magnitude of the electric field as a function of the distance R from the axis of the cable from R equals 0 to R equals 2C. And part D. Find the charge per unit length on the inner surface and on the outer surface of the outer cylinder. All right, so we have an inner cylinder, radius A. It's a metal conductor. It carries a positive charge density lambda, linear charge density lambda. We have an outer cylinder, <coughs> inner radius B, outer radius C, which is also a conductor. <coughs> the net charge on this cylinder is zero. In order to find the electric field at any point, we have to uh, basically draw a Gaussian cylinder uh, for, with length L and radius R. And this was done for the region between the two uh, cylinders. Uh, so in part A, we want to find uh, a distance R from the axis at any point between the cylinders. So <coughs> if I write Gauss law, closed surface integral E dot dA, the total electric flux is going to be equal to, now because this is a positive uh, charge, uh, the electric field will point radially outward and it will be perpendicular to the area vector on the two caps, but it will be parallel to the area vector uh, for the uh, side surface. And that's going to give us E times 2 pi r times length of the Gaussian cylinder. <coughs> Electric field is going to be only a function of r, so it comes out of the integral. This is going to be equal to the charge enclosed divided by epsilon 0. And what is the charge enclosed? It is the linear charge density lambda multiplied with length of our cylinder divided by epsilon 0. So L's will cancel. And we will see that the electric field, electric field E is lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 r it's in r hat direction for r between a and b that is in between the inner cylinder and the outer cylinder now in part b at any point outside the outer cylinder uh, so this radius r will now be greater than c uh, if i write gauss law again closed surface integral e dot da this is going to be equal to e times 2 pi rl, the same thing. Now, the contribution from the inner cylinder is lambda times L to the charge enclosed. Since the outer cylinder doesn't carry any net charge, uh, there is zero contribution divided by epsilon zero. So I find that the electric field is lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 r in r hat direction also for r greater than c. So the same answer outside the outer cylinder. Now in part c we were asked to graph the magnitude of electric field as a function of distance from r equals 0 to r equals 2c. Now what is happening for r less than a? r less than a we are inside a conductor 
remember that the inner cylinder is a conductor. Uh, inside a conductor, electric field is equal to zero. Between A and B, we have found in uh, part A, the magnitude of the electric field to be lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 r. Between uh, B and C, so r between B and C, we are again inside a conductor, the outer uh, metal cylinder. Um, so inside a conductor, again the electric field magnitude will be zero and for r greater than c that's the answer to part b the electric field is lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 r so we we know the electric field in all regions so we can plot it now uh, inside the inner cylinder it is zero then it is lambda over 2 pi epsilon 0 r. So starting at r equals a, lambda over 2 pi epsilon 0 a, it decreases uh, until we reach the outer cylinder's inner radius b, where it becomes lambda over 2 pi epsilon 0 b. Then it is zero in, inside the outer cylinder. And at the outer radius c, lambda over 2 pi epsilon 0 c, and it decreases following the same function uh, as a distance, uh, as a function of r. So this is going to be the case uh, all the way to infinity. So that answers part c. Now in part d, we want to find the charge per unit length on the inner surface and the outer surface of the outer uh, cylinder. All right, so we know We know that the electric field has to be zero for R between B and C because we're inside the inside the outer conducting cylinder. So if I write Gauss law taking a Gaussian surface that's going to have a radius in this region, uh, closed surface integral E dot dA. Once again, this is going to be equal to E times 2 pi RL. That is uh, the charge enclosed due to the inner cylinder, lambda L, plus the charge in, in the inside surface of the outer cylinder divided by epsilon zero. And I know that this electric field has to be zero inside the metal, so this has to be zero. So this tells me that Q in has to be equal to minus lambda times L or Q in divided by L is minus lambda. So uh, the charge per unit length on the inner surface is uh, minus lambda. Now, how about the outer surface? Uh, the total charge, Q total, uh, divided by L, is equal to Q in in inner surface divided by L plus Q outer surface divided by L. And we were told that the net charge here has to be equal to zero. So if this is zero, the outer cylinder was not charged, then I find that the charge per unit length for the outer surface of the outer cylinder, Q out divided by L, should be equal to lambda. So that's the answer to part D. And if I plot this situation, I see the following. 
the inner cylinder has a charge per unit length lambda. This is the side view. You can see that all of this charge will reside on the surface so that the electric field inside is going to be zero. Uh, there is an electric field uh, between the two cylinders, uh, the inner cylinder and outer cylinder's inner surface. The inner surface has a charge per unit length minus lambda, so all the negative charges reside on this surface. And when I go to uh, inside the outer cylinder, because these two charge distributions cancel each other, the electric field inside will be zero. And when I go uh, to the outer surface of this uh, outer cylinder, because the net charge on the outer cylinder should be zero, if I have minus lambda here, then I should have plus lambda here, all of the charge residing on the surface of the outer surface of the outer cylinder. And electric field uh, lines will point radially outward. Okay, so in this problem, we talked about the coaxial uh, cable which consists of an inner cylindrical conductor and outer coaxial cylindrical conductor, inner radius B, outer radius C, inner cylindrical conductor has radius A. The inner cylinder has uniform positive charge per unit length. The outer cylinder has no net charge. So first we have found the electric field everywhere. For R between A and B, we take this Gaussian uh, surface uh, and because the electric field lines will be pointing radially outward, the, they will be perpendicular to the area vector on these caps, so these will have no contribution. E times 2 pi RL, the side uh, surface area of the cylinder, is charge enclosed divided by epsilon 0, which is lambda times the length L divided by epsilon 0, gives us our answer. And for R greater than C, we have a similar situation because the outer cylinder has no charge. All the contribution comes from the uh, inner cylinder, which is lambda times L to the total charge. So we have the same answer. Inside a conductor, inside the inner cylinder and inside the outer cylinder, we have zero electric field and we can plot it here. You can see we have zero electric field inside the conductors and it is decreasing as one over R everywhere else. And we can find the charge distribution on the outer uh, cylinder uh, by taking a Gaussian surface uh, from the side view you can see here, which has radius between uh, B and C. Uh, because the electric field is zero inside this cylinder, the charge enclosed must be equal to zero. We have lambda times L contribution coming from the inner cylinder. Therefore, we should have minus lambda times L from the outer cylinder inner surface. So we have minus lambda uh, charge density in the inner surface of the outer cylinder. And because the net charge is zero, the outer surface of the outer cylinder will have the opposite sign plus lambda.